Please say and spell your name. Edric Hall, E-D-R-I-C-K, H-A-L-L. What is your job title? Chief of Police. <laughs> what, made it, what motivated you to become a police officer? Well, I think it was something that I just wanted to do as a young child uh, when I was a lot younger. Um, going, just growing up, I had a, um, another relative that was in law enforcement, kind of looked up to him, admired him, saw the work that he did, and found out what it was he, that I needed to do to become a police officer. So uh, my goal was to become a police officer and one day move into the field and be the chief of police. And uh, I'm blessed to currently say I'm chief of police at this time after 17 years of law enforcement. What is your role in keeping your community safe? Wow, uh, keeping the community safe. I would say to make sure that we keep crime reduced. And that's not by always just arresting people keep crime reduced. That's officer presence. Uh, doing events like you guys are doing today, making sure that we are out here and let the community know we're there for them. Encouraging citizens, if they see something, to say something. Notify us of what's going on in the area. And just be a part of the community. So many times people look at the police department as something separately. But I say any other police department, we're here in the city. So we are a part of the community, not separate. How do you partner with community members to keep the community safe? Well, a lot of things we try to do at the police department is we'd like to do outreach. We go to different things like we're doing now, go to different organizations, civic clubs, and we speak to them. Uh, we're trying to start a uh, community policing where we'll have an officer, and that's all he will focus on. Uh, and preferably we'll have it started soon. And we're going to try to engage the community and make sure we're there for them. What circumstances impair you to see incarceration for a young person? What circumstance, I'm sorry? What circumstan circumstances impel you to seek incarceration for a young person? Incarceration for anybody is sad. Uh, but when you do have to inca incarcerate the youth, uh, it's, it always plays, a, uh, always plays a role on you mentally because you always wonder if there's anything you could have done different as an officer. Could I have done something different to maybe try to save this youth, to try to save this child? Mm -hmm. uh, but so sometimes, it is unfortunate certain people don't want to be saved. We can try to do programs like we're doing now. Uh, I wish there were more kids here, but some just decide to go a different path. So unfortunately for those, we still have to make the arrest. It's not nothing we take pride in, especially in arresting youth, but it does happen. So those circumstances is, uh, you know, not for sale. What alternatives to incarceration do you recommend for youth and why? I think that the biggest thing we need to start is with the school, our education. Uh, and I think that's the biggest alternative because the way to get out of anything, to get out of poverty, to get away from single families, mothers being single families or fathers even being single family, is for the child to get a quality education. So I think if a child has a quality education in life, then he or she can succeed and do whatever they need to do and that keeps them away from crime. When you live in a city such as Indianola, we don't have YMCA or we don't have different things that the kids can do. So I'm grateful for the different outreach programs we do have, but we don't have enough, I think, to keep our young kids off the street. So I think we need more to keep them off the street. As a peace officer, what is your responsibility in protecting young people? It's my responsibility to protect all, uh, but I would say do it affect me more mentally, emotionally, when I see something happen to a youth or elderly, it does. Uh, it makes me drive a lot harder when, when they are a victim of a crime. Uh, we can't predict crimes as they, are, as they occur. All we can do is just try to stay motivated and be proactive, but uh, all crimes bother me, but when it's pertaining to youth or elderly, they bother me more. Okay. <clears throat> What is your top recommendation for creating schools where young men of color can thrive? Engagement. Um, I think we have to make sure that, uh, to remember we're living in a different age. The same thing that went on when I was in school that worked, it doesn't work for this generation that we have now. We have to make sure we keep our kids engaged, make sure that the teachers are keeping the kids engaged. Everybody learns different, and I challenge the teachers to go out and find, I don't care if you have 30 kids in your classroom, you need to understand what's the best way to keep each child individually engaged in class so they can receive their proper education. What advice do you have for African-American young men? Education. 
Uh, just that's simple. I, I can't stress it enough. The most important thing is education. Uh, stay in school. Do, do what you have to do. We have uh, a fad that's going around to where we think it's okay to uh, hang out on the street. We think it's okay to say I got pants. Uh, we think if we make all A's in school, we're a nerd or we're a geek or something like that, and those kids sometimes are targeted. But those are the future doctors. Those are the future lawyers. Those are the, that's the future. And I would just encourage them all to, to realize it starts on how you feel. So if you get up in the morning and you dress to impress and you go to school feeling good and you get your education. With education is just a key. How do your own personal experience in the Delta shape how you engage young men and boys of color? Raised right here in the Delta, born in Greenville, Mississippi. Um, have I experienced racism? Yes, I have. Have I seen racism? Yes, I have. But I have to honestly say that things are better in the Mississippi Delta. Uh, we're not perfect, a long way from perfect. I don't think we'll ever be perfect. But just my own experiences um, was just those to make sure that I was not overlooked for certain positions that I applied for. Uh, I was not um, targeted for driving uh, just because of my skin color, to make sure that I was treated fairly uh, whenever I was pulled over. But I will also say on the opposite side to that is, when I, whenever I was pulled over, I made sure I respected the officer, no matter if it was a male or female, no matter if it was black or white, uh, because that's what I was raised to do. What gives you hope? The youth, things like this. Um, just knowing that sitting here with you guys today, I think it's, I counted maybe 17, 18 of you in here today. I could be off a little bit, but just you. You could be anywhere else right now, but you chose to come here today. And uh, you took time out of your schedule to want to interview and talk to me, and I thank you for it. That gives me hope. Is there anything you would like to add? I would encourage each of you uh, and everybody that's looking at this is to keep pressing and to keep fighting. I can't tell you that you won't come along obstacles. I won't tell you things won't hurt along the way. But if you stay the path, if you make up your mind what you want to do, you can be whatever it is you want to be. Thank you. Thank you.